Hi, my name is Sarah from the American Independence Museum. And for this month's Revolutionary Storytime, we will be reading The Ride, The Legend of Betsy Doughty, written by Kitty Griffin, illustrated by Marjorie Priceman. It's the adventure story of a young girl who, after hearing some news that troops were coming, British troops were coming to her village in the Outer Banks of North Carolina, took it upon herself to hop on her pony and ride through the night nearly 50 miles to warn the local militia who could come help save her village. So follow me as we go with Betsy on her journey and understand that no matter who you are, and even if the odds are against you, you too can have a positive effect and make great change. The Ride, The Legend of Betsy Doughty by Kitty Griffin, illustrated by Marjorie Priceman. Sometimes legends start in the quietest of places. On December 8, 1775, a legend began on the barrier island of Currituck, North Carolina. Like the residents in the rest of the American colonies, the people in North Carolina wanted freedom from England's rule. King George III answered them with punishing laws and soldiers to enforce them. When 16-year-old Betsy Doughty heard Papa talk about war approaching, she felt as helpless as a ghost crab skittering along the sand. She couldn't stop King George. She couldn't fight as a soldier. With her pony Bess standing as close as a shadow, Betsy stared out at the choppy waters of Currituck Sound. Bess sniffed Betsy's apron pocket. Betsy reached in and pulled out an apple. One thing she could do was take care of the pony she loved. Just then she saw a boat bobbing in the water. Papa came running. It's late, he said, something's wrong. Sam Jarvis started shouting before he reached the dock. Lord Dunmore and the Redcoats are marching to Great Bridge. They're after your ponies and our supplies. We have to stop them, Betsy cried. Only General Skinner's militia can, but his camp is 50 miles away, Mr. Jarvis said. Papa shook his head. There's not a man who could get word to the general tonight. The ride is too long and too dangerous. Betsy watched them leave to warn their neighbors. Warning folks wasn't enough. The redcoats had to be stopped. No one was going to take away all she loved. She knew Bess could outrun any horse. They could make the ride. Betsy stuffed her wool cloak and dry socks into an oiled leather bag. She slid her knife into its sheath, and from the cupboard she took her warmest Lindsay Woolsey shirt. She tightened the stays on her vest and pulled on her leather breeches. Her hands shook as she wrote Skinner on her slate for Papa to see. Betsy gave a loud whistle and Bess trotted up. We need to be strong, Bess, she said, pulling herself up. We're riding for freedom. She guided Bess to the channel crossing. They paused at the water's edge. She couldn't stop King George. She couldn't fight us as a soldier, but she could ride. Go on, girl, she said. And with a splash, Bess plunged in. Betsy gasped as cold water swirled around her. The flow lifted her off her pony's back, but she gripped Bess's mane until they reached the shore. The night air stiffened Betsy's fingers as she pulled the dry socks up over her legs. She fastened her cloak tightly, but nothing stopped her chattering teeth. They followed the narrow path through the marshland and into the forest. Bess snorted and stood still, her ears flickered. Through the trees, Betsy saw moonlight reflect off a pair of staring eyes. She gripped the hilt of her knife. Was it a bear? She pressed her heels into Bess's flanks and silently urging the pony on. When the path led to the hard packed dirt road, Betsy leaned forward and whispered, now Bess, run. Away the pony flew. Betsy held on. She prayed for their way to be safe from outlaws. She prayed Bess wouldn't stumble. The miles fell behind them as Bess kept a steady pace. Surely they were near Lamb's Ferry. As they rounded a bend, a barking pack of dogs leapt at them. Bess reared and Betsy stumbled off. Who goes there? demanded a booming voice. Betsy Doughty from Currituck, she replied, her voice trembling. It was Mr. Lamb. Betsy sat up. Dunmore has soldiers marching to Great Bridge. I have to warn General Skinner. Take us across the river. 
Are you wearing breeches, girl? Mr. Lamb held out his hand and pulled her up. I would have drowned in my skirts, she answered. Mr. Lamb, if I don't give warning, the British will take everything from us. Bess and I have made it this far. You have to take us across. You have to. You're a pepper pot, Betsy Doughty. Come on. He helped get Bess onto a flat-bottomed boat. As he pulled them over, Mr. Lamb gave Betsy advice. Keep to the road. Pass Harford to the Pemmerquin Highlands. There, head south. The second river is you owe him. Ah, oh, Betsy, God keep you safe. Liberty is our dream. Liberty. Betsy repeated the word as Bess's hoofs pounded the dirt. Liberty. She said it out loud, letting the word comfort her. Bess jumped to clear something. Betsy glanced back and saw a snarling fox guarding its kill. The path seemed to change. Had they reached the highlands? How many more miles? Betsy's eyes began to close. Only she could sleep just a little bit. A low tree bough slapped her hard in the face. Betsy was flung to the ground. She wiped dirt from her mouth. Another fall. She couldn't do this. It's too far. Too much. But if she gave up, Papa would go to prison for his angry words against King George. She would lose her home. The colonies might never be free. Bess whinnied. She pawed the ground by Betsy. You're right, girl. Everything depends on us. Betsy rose to her feet and mounted her pony. She couldn't stop the king. She couldn't fight as a soldier, but she could ride. Finally, the pale gray light of morning pushed away the darkness. Betsy yawned and slowed Bess down to an easy lope. Halt, called a young soldier on the road. Is this Governor Skinner's camp, Betsy asked. He stared. Who are you? She pushed back the hood of her cloak so he could see her face. Betsy Doughty, I've got news for the general. The general's up there, the soldier pointed. Betsy pressed her heels into the pony once more. We've done it, Bess. After listening to her story, the general said, I'll take my men and we'll give Dunmore a fight. Great Bridge is too important to yield to the Redcoats. My pony needs to be cared for, Betsy said. Aye, both of you do, the general said. I suggest you eat and rest, Miss Betsy. North Carolina is in your debt. You are a remarkable young woman. No, sir, Betsy answered. I just know how to ride. As Betsy rode back to Currituck Sound, the men of North Carolina marched to Great Bridge. They met up with the Virginia militia and together the soldiers fought the British troops. The victory ultimately won by the colonial soldiers on December 9th, 1775 was critical because it proved that the mighty British army could be defeated. On July 4th, 1776, just seven months after Betsy's ride, the American colonies united the de and declared independence. It cannot be proved that Betsy Doughty really existed, but her legend lives on. In Elizabeth City, North Carolina, the Daughters of the American Revolution named their chapter after Betsy Doughty because her name represents the spirit of freedom, the spirit that created a nation.